But if you look at the real size of that crowd, it was never reported correctly. Mm -hmm. There were... It's the biggest crowd I've ever spoken in front of by far. Really? By far. That went down to the Washington... That went back to the Washington Monument. Um, you told them you were going to go up to the Capitol. Were you just... I was, no, I was going to, and the Secret Service said, you can't. And then by the time... I would have. And then when I got back, I saw... I wanted to go back. I was thinking about going back during the problem to stop the problem, doing it myself. Secret Service didn't like that idea too much. So, so what... And I could so have done that. And you know what? I would have been very well received. Don't forget, the people that went to Washington that day, in my opinion, they went because they thought the election was rigged. That's why they went. I will never get over the consistency with which Donald Trump decides to sit down for interviews and inevitably screws himself over. If it was any more regular, it could challenge the sun rising in the morning. Here Donald Trump makes some especially damning admissions in a newly released interview from 2021 with ABC's Jonathan Carl, but I want to focus on two moments in particular. For one, he explains that he was going to enter the January 6th mob and says, quote, I was thinking about going back during the problem to stop the problem, and then says I would have been very well received. In other words, Trump admits that he could have called off the insurrection. But let's think about that for a moment. I wonder why that is. Might it be because those people were there on your orders? Because generally, people aren't well received when they voluntarily walk into an ongoing insurrection unless they are sympathetic to the cause or incited it. Here you've got both. And don't take my word for it. Take the word of those insurrectionists themselves who've admitted en masse, both in court and out of court, that they were there at Trump's direction and acting on his orders. When Riley June Williams, known for allegedly helping steal a laptop from Speaker Pelosi's office, appeared in court on January 21st, her lawyer said to the judge, quote, it is regrettable that Ms. Williams took the president's bait and went inside the Capitol. Troy Smox, who was in the Capitol riot on January 6th, posted online that day, quote, the pre president today, President Trump told us to fight like hell. He also posted that the president, quote, said that our case was a matter of national security. Samuel Fisher was charged with disorderly conduct and illegally being in the Capitol on January 6th. That day, before the attack on this building, he wrote on his website, quote, Trump just needs to fire the bat signal, and quote, then the pain comes. The lawyer for Dominic Pozzola, a leader of the Proud Boys, who was the first person to break inside the Capitol, said that President Trump effectively told his client and others, quote, people of the country, come on down. Let people know what you think. Quote, logical thinking was, he invited us down. Pozzola's lawyer went on, these were people acting in a way they've never acted before. And it begs the question, who lit the fuse, end quote. On January 6, we know who lit the fuse. Donald Trump told these insurrectionists to come to the Capitol and stop the steal. And they did come to the Capitol. And they tried to stop the certification. They came because he told them to. In other words, when Donald Trump, during this interview with Jonathan Carl, says that he would have been well received, it lends itself to the already prevailing notion that the reason he would have been well received is because the insurrectionists were there for him, acting at his direction and on his orders. Granted, it doesn't take much to realize that Trump was directing this mob, considering these were the words that came from his own mouth on January 6th. All that's happened, the best is yet to come. So we're going to, we're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol and we're going to try and give, you know, the Democrats are hopeless. They're never voting for anything. Not even one vote. But we're going to try and give our Republicans, the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help, we're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue 
I want to thank you all. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you all for being here. This is incredible. Thank you very much. So yeah, not exactly what I would call ambiguous. And by the way, when you add this admission that he could have, quote, stopped the problem to the fact that on January 6th, his advisors and even Ivanka were going in and begging him in the dining room to do something to no avail, it shows that he knew he had the power to stop it and yet made the conscious decision not to because he wanted the insurrection to continue. If that doesn't put his culpability on full display, I don't know what does. Trump also goes on in this Jonathan Carlin interview to say, quote, they went because they thought the election was rigged, that's why they went. Bingo. And who told them that? Donald Trump did. Which brings me to the leaked testimony we got just a few days ago. Here's Donald Trump's former attorney, Sidney Powell. Ms. Powell, were you ever around when someone, anyone, told uh, Donald Trump that he had lost the election? Oh, yeah. Who? Uh, Pat Cipollone, Eric Hirschman, Derek Lyons, all thought he'd lost. Was that in the December 18th meeting? Yes. What, what was... Um... President Trump's reaction when, I guess, this cadre of advisors would say, you lost? It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go, see, this is what I deal with all the time. In other words, he was told that he lost to his face by White House attorneys. Not that he won, but for some avalanche of fraud, but that he lost. Meaning when he told his supporters to go to the Capitol to avenge a rigged election, he knew that he was lying. We've got firsthand testimony from Sidney Powell, his own attorney, that Trump was told the truth, and yet he opted to discard those facts because he wanted to perpetuate a lie. And so that's exactly what he did, using that known lie to summon his supporters to the Capitol because they, quote, thought the election was rigged, which again, it was not. Trump wasn't the victim of fraud, he was simply a loser. But he pretended that he was the victim of fraud because he needed a predicate to summon a mob to the Capitol. And between Powell's first-hand account and Trump's own admission, all of that is now perfectly clear. And look, I would suggest that maybe Trump should stop talking, but then I wouldn't want Jack Smith and Fawny Willis and the prosecutors arguing for his disqualification from the ballot on 14th Amendment grounds not to keep racking up the evidence because that's exactly what they're getting here. Trump certainly is helping build these court cases, but it's not for the defense, it is for the prosecution. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you wanna to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.